Okay, welcome back. We're going to continue on this program. Uh, when you think about where we're at right now, we, we call this CLI and we've got basically a to-do list, right? We either handle dash dash file or we handle dash dash list. So we've, we've got to do both of those. Uh, so we could focus on that. Right? We could focus on handling that or we could focus on what happens uh, when we return from this and uh, and and how we're going to handle that. So I'm going to really try to fit both of those into this video. The first thing I'm going to do is go to our header file and I'm going to make us a, a change. I'm going to say as I've thought about this, you know, as I've been working with this and thinking about it, I'm going to call this CLI init, meaning I will call this to initialize the CLI interface. And then, as I've thought about it more, I'm going to say I'm going to have another function that returns an integer. And this function is going to be CLI get um, num, or I, I shall call this get list size. And once the command line interface has initialized everything, I want to be able to ask it, what is the size of the list? As we know, you're going to have a list of words, a list of numbers, a list of whatever it is you want to guess. Well, I might want to know the size. And as a character pointer, um, so a character pointer I also want to have a CLI get the actual list. In other words, get the list of words. Get the list. And thinking about this, this is going to actually be a pointer. And watch this carefully. This is something we haven't seen. I really, when you think about what I want to have is a character array, basically have, a, have an array of pointers. In other words, this will be the same as we have here, right, an array of these, and then, which is the same we pass into here, we have an array of these. So what I want to be able to do is get get this back. So again, this is a great example. Notice how as we progress in our code, we're adding functionality. We're adding functionality. And in fact, what I'll do is grab these two new ones that we have. I'll copy those into my buffer. Come over to my CLI.C. And we already have this CLI here although now it's going to be called CLI underscore init. Right, we'll have the init function. And if you want to, while it's on your mind, you could go into the main and say, well, this is also be called CLI init. Right, we'll have initialize our command line interface. And then here, I'm going to say, well, I'll go ahead and put these other functions we can put them either at the top or the bottom. I will put them, I think, right here just for keep them at the top for now. We can get the size and we can get get the, uh, the list of this. And I want you to notice that here it's saying function cannot return an array type. Wow. Now of course, I knew it was going to be like this, but one of the reasons I wanted to follow this process is this is an error I've seen people make a good bit. We actually have a whole lesson coming up just on pointers and arrays. But when you look at this, it's character pointers that are in an array. So an array of character pointers. And so it would seem like here we could say the same thing. But it turns out, 
And again, we'll find more about this. I think it comes up in the next lesson when we talk about arrays and pointers. You can actually say a character pointer to a pointer. And it turns out an array is actually a pointer. So here, and I realize this looks very confusing, but we're saying return a character pointer to a character pointer. And of course that means here in our prototype this should also be two stars. Wow, very interesting. Now for the sake of demonstration, and right I like to take things step by step, let's just say for the sake of demonstration we're going to say return uh, we'll say return three okay test only we'll return three now when we now when you see something like this happens contents diverge I just click on choose my changes uh, what happens it gets disconnected temporarily um, anyway, here we're going to have a list. Uh, it's going to turn a pointer to a pointer. Now what I'm going to do, and watch carefully, we're going to have a character pointer. I'll just call this, um, well, let's call it test words, which is going to be an array. And this is going to be equal to open and close curly brace with a semicolon. And I'm going to call this 1, 2, 3. This is an array. And remember, we have a lesson coming up. We'll say much more about this. An array is more than one. Well, here we have one, two, three. And these are all character pointers because that's what a string is. So a character pointer here, character pointer here, character pointer here. Now this data, I'm going to put the word up. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Bummer. Let me do this again. Character pointer. Uh, what did I call it? Test words as an array equals open and close curly brace semicolon because all this is one statement and then we'll say the word one two and three this value by default global access what I mean by that this variable called test words by default can be accessed throughout this whole project. Anyone could get access to this. We don't want anyone to get access. We only want it inside this file. Use static to make it file scope. I'm going to put the word oops, did it again click right here and put the word static in front of it. The scope, so this global access, maybe I'll call it global scope, this shows how you access variables. If you de declare a, a variable in a file, like this test words is a variable, right? It's an array variable, but it's a variable. If you don't put static in front of it, anybody in the program can get access to it. It's called global scope. If you put static in front of it, like we've done here, it becomes file scope. Meaning anybody in this file can access it, but no one else, only within this file. So there's global scope, there's file scope, and the one we use most often is actually line 34 is a good example of that, is local scope. That is, the variable is only accessible inside a function. 
So I'll call this local or function scope. I'll just call it local scope. So it's local to this function. Nobody else can get access to it. So what this means, we can now say return test words. We can say return those test words. Wow. And remember, this is for test purposes. We're testing out our API. We want to make sure we can get the list size and get the test words. Later on, we'll actually have real test words, but right now we just have some hard-coded ones. Maybe I'll click on Run just to make sure I don't have any errors so far, and I don't. And remember, if you do have errors, I want to stress over and over, it's simply a matter of backing up and re-watching the video and being very careful as you watch it, pausing when needed, slowing it down when needed. What we want to do now is actually test the get list size, CLI get list size, and the CLI get list. So I'm going to go to my main.c, and after I initialize, and this is for test purposes, we'll say, um, oh, let's do this. We'll say printf guess which guess what word from these words. All right, backslash in. So we've we've sent out our welcome, we've initialized, and now we're going to say for actually we'll do it like this. We'll say let's have an integer, and remember this is local scope, local to the function. Let's call it list size, and this is going to be equal to CLI get list size. We go to this CLI function and say, find out the size. Then we'll say, for integer i equals zero, i less than the list size. And each time, we will increment it. what we could do is print out each word. Well, to print out each word, we need a character pointer, pointer, because we know, and I'll just call this the, uh, the words, let's call it word V, or, word, or we'll call it the word, word list equals CLI get the list. Get the list. And again, this is kind of tricky. Right? Character pointer to pointer. In fact, once you master this, you'll be in the... I've actually worked with uh, professional developers where this throws them off. A pointer to a pointer. But think of your index finger, you're pointing to something, and then it's pointing to something else. So what this means, we can come through here and say printf we're going to print a string and then a space and then we want to get the string based on the word list so we'll say we want to see the word list of I. Now, again, don't be scared off by this, because when, when you master this, you'll, you again, you're, you're going to be in that domain of um, really understanding this. We have a pointer to a pointer. Well, it turns out a pointer can also be viewed as an array. And if it's an array, all you need is the index 
to go into that. So we're basically going through each word in the array. Let's run this and see what happens. Wow. Guess what word from these words? One, two, three. And of course, what we should have done at the end of the for loop is do a printf backslash n. Wow, pretty amazing. Let me run that again. Guess what word from these words? One, two, three. So I think I'm going to stop the video here. Um, as a review, in our CLI, we decided to call this a init for initialize. All right, so this is, this is what you call to initialize the CLI. Very common to have to initialize something. We added two more function prototypes. Right, these are function, all of these are function prototypes, meaning we can now get the list size. We can get the actual list, which is a character pointer to pointer. In the CLI.C, we actually implemented a static, meaning it's got file scope. It can only be seen in this file. We have hard-coded some values just to test this out. right? So when you call this, we return the test words. Remember, one of our topics is modular programming. Well, that's what you're seeing here. We've got everything within this module. By doing static as private to this module, we provided these interfaces where you can get access to it. In course, in main, we've even proven that it works by calling the CLI get list size and also calling the CLI get the list. All right, as always, make sure your code is matching what I've got. And if needed, it's okay to watch the videos multiple times. I mean, that's how you learn. And, and even when you have errors in your code, Remember, no pain, no gain. It's kind of a trivial thing to say, but it's very, it is very true. Uh, actually, the more issues you have as you code through here, and the more times you do it and practice, uh, the better you get. Okay, I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks, as always, for watching.